Shalom, beloved. A word. A word from the Most High to comfort those who feel comfortless. <clears throat> the world is speaking death. But God said, you shall live and not die. Not die. I want to read from Psalm 118, verse 17. You're going to decree and declare this thing in the midst of this darkness that the world is caught in. Okay? I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die, but live. Remember, the power of life and death is in the tongue. All right? When we look in Psalm 118, we're going to verse 8. It is better, yes it is, to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. People right now are feasting. They're just they they they're serving this this meal of fear. It's constant. The media has gone crazy. I think they're trying to be famous, and all they've got is chaos, tumult, anarchy, disarray, disorder. Okay, but we already know that 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 sad song. We know that sad song. We understand the speech of the beast, but that's not the speech of God's anointed. That's not the speech of God's anointed. We don't speak in fear. We speak in faith. That's how you can discern the difference between the two. Okay? The Spirit says, test the spirits. The Holy Spirit, test the spirits. Okay? Are they of the terrestrial? Are they of man? Are they of man or are they of God? These words that the world is speaking. See, even that, you got to understand something. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 9, it talks about the world's plural. Because you've got different worlds out here. The, the world of man, the terrestrial, they want you to think on this earthly level, this earthly spirit, if you will. Let me tell you how deep it really gets. Even now, we live in this country, and we have been fed so many lies, but during this time of our uh, uh, isolation, God is waking us up. Many of us have been asleep to the truth, to knowledge. I'm just going to go into this so-called fake new year. This fake New Year, okay? January 1st. Where does January get its name from? This so-called Roman god named Janus. Janus, okay? Let me tell you a little something, something about him. He is considered God to the entrance, to the beginning and end of time. To celebrate the entrance and departure, the beginning and the ends, okay? He's a two-headed being celebrating the entrance into one world and the exit of another, okay? The beginning and the end. Who does that sound like? Who does that sound like? The, the, these pagans who've been teaching this for so long. We know the Most High is the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, okay? We have been taught this for so long, okay? The Romans would celebrate it, beginning and end, to Janus on January 1st by giving offerings to Janus in the hope of gaining good fortune for the new year. Now, don't they tell you... Don't you have a New Year's re resolution believing that if, oh, please, 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 please give me good fortune. Who are you talking to on January 4th? Janice, this two-headed, one head looking backward, one head looking forward. This is a pagan system and it's crumbling. 
remember, I told you, and I'm going to go into it, um, Hebrews 13, verse 9. Hebrews 13, verse 9. He made the world. What world? See, you've got the terrestrial, you've got the celestial. Some people, this paganistic world, we were entrapped here because of sin. Time's up. And this pagan system is crumbling before our very eyes. Okay? You can liken us when we were first brought here. Think of a caterpillar. We had to crawl on our bellies. We had to eat whatever we could find. But then... As the Most High began waking us up, we went into this cocoon. We went into this cocoon. And we started transforming because that word, that word of life was in us. Transforming us, metamorphosizing us. We shall not be conformed to the ways of the world, but transformed by the renewing of our minds. We've been transformed, beloved. And we about to break out. We got wings to fly. We can fly above the terrestrial. Understand something. The spiritual person understands the physical person, but the physical person cannot understand the spiritual one. We know that the pestilence goes before the most high. For who? For who? We also know that during the time that we were in Egypt, we were witnessing those plagues. We were witnessing those plagues. And just to give you a little something, something in this place, okay? Just to give you a little something. Think about it. In the first one, it was blood. They loved to shed blood, so they had blood to drink, blood in their food, okay? Israel was there when this tumult was going on, but it was showing. Israel was about to be redeemed, okay? When you need to clean something up, something that's been a mess far too long, think about a room. And it's a room you need to work in. In order to clean it up, sometimes you got to tear it up. It get chaotic, stuff everywhere. And one of the very first things you start noticing is, you know what? First of all, I found things that I needed, but I thought were lost. Secondly, I've got things in here taking up a lot of space that don't, shouldn't have any space at all. And you start getting rid of them. Chaos creates order. God is a God of order. He's removing the disorder. And you're watching this pagan system just come down. Just, just implode, imploding on itself. Okay, and it's using what it's always used, lie, manipulation, deceit, tumult, anarchy, chaos. God's a God of order. He's a God of order. Right now, it, it, it seems like the media wants to be famous because they just, it's one chaotic situation after the other, and they just over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Another thing I just wanted to speak on um, you got these newspapers, particularly Kansas City Star, apologizing for over 140 years of, of reporting negatively against blacks. Now, one of the things you also got to keep in mind is while they were reporting negatively, many people were having the seeds of these lies implanted in their minds. That's a propaganda machine making them feel as though it was okay to brutalize, to lie on, to imprison, to kill black people. It did happen down there in Ferguson, Missouri. If we talk in Kansas, Missouri. Ferguson is in Missouri. So this paper has preached evil towards a nation, and they're not the only paper that has done it. Making many others feel justified. In doing evil against an entire nation of people, a hundred and forty years. Okay, I'm talking about where um, it's called detraction, detraction. Okay, detraction desensitizes people. Detraction also empowers people to make them feel they got the right to abuse somebody. Think of a bully. Think of bullies. Here's a whole group. And I'm using the media 
running around going at this one nation of people. So anybody that wants to take advantage of them, let's say foreigners coming in, well, all we got to do is say they've been everything this other group of people said they were. If we kill them, if we shoot them, if we rape them, if we brutalize them, lie, they won't believe us. Why? Because you got a propaganda machine that's been running all this time, causing death, brutality, theft, murder, mayhem. And now you want to say, I'm sorry. Reparations alone? Do you know that to lie on people that way and to have done it that long? An apology? Some people would say that's weak as puppy piss. I mean, it, that don't hold no ground. It don't have no legs on it. I, I just want to speak on that because that propaganda machine that the Kansas City Star is admitting to is not the only ones that have done it. And again, that's called detract. Shun. That's a sin. It's an evil. Um, that's like talking about a virgin like she's a whore. And you keep saying this person, this female's a whore. Many young men have done it in schools. That's like talking about an innocent person like they're guilty and cause the, the shedding of innocent blood. That's a great sin. Just just so you know. And I'm sorry. Hmm. Hmm. We're going to move on. Right now, these strange doctrines, these strange doctrines, you be careful, beloved, about these strange doctrines, okay? The world, this system, this world, because this is not the world that was in America if you go back before the, col the colonizers were here. It was a different world, okay? The natives were here. This, this system of brutalizing people, of killing animals for sport, um, speak them with them hooked tongue, was not here. You have different worlds. There is a world that Yasharel dwelled in before they uh, went against the Most High God and started following the ways of other nations, the following the ways of other nations, brothers and sisters. Um... And understand something. What we follow, what we believe, goes according to what the word of God said. Even Yeshua HaMashiach. See, this system tells us, you pray to Jesus, you pray to Jesus. No, 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 because they manipulate. Remember that? Even the serpent in the garden, he manipulated with words. With words. When you read about the nature of uh Esau, Edom, and you read about Jacob, Edom was a crafty hunter, cunning, what does that mean? Deceptive, deceitful, used trickery, guile, okay, hunt, he would hunt, hunting people, hunting souls, hmm. I know in the word of God, it says, woe is be to the earth and sea below, for the devil has come down to you like a hungry lion seeking, hunting, whom he may devour. Okay. Um, you be careful, beloved, and understand that right now we are witnessing the reward. We're watching. We are watching. Just like in the days of Egypt and the Exodus, we're seeing it now. And what's happening? What's happening? We're going to go to the book of Joel. I marked it. Let me see. God, help me find it real quick. The book of Joel, when he, when he gives back the years. Woo! Here you go. Book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 25. I'm not going to be long, even though it's going longer than I intended now. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Understand, this is going on all over the world. Many of the treasures that were stolen, even out of the land of Africa, they're having to restore, give it back. 
But there are years, years that have been stolen. And you might say, what do you mean? Many of the work people have done, underpaid, mistreated, many people languishing in prison, the years stolen, many of us overpriced, overcharged, stolen, he's giving it back. But there's a cleanup that has to go on right now, brothers and sisters. Chaos. And out of that chaos, true order. No, not a new world order. Hmm. Let, let, let me finish with this. God said, I am a God of order. Hmm. See, you got to watch the enemy. You got to watch the enemy. Because he uses the most high words and truth and he twists it. You can't. You can't do a new world order. Time's up. Time's up. You got to come down off of that throne and to the dust from whence you came. Mm -mm -mm. God said, I am a God of order. The order. Don't worry about this fake new world terrestrial order. Mm -mm -mm -mm. God said, I am a God of order. The order is coming from God. He's tearing it up and giving back the years. He's restoring. First of all, so you understand and don't think from the terrestrial. The greatest restoration, the greatest restoration. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. And for the most high to cleanse us with his word, to open our eyes. Okay. God's a God of order. He's not a God of chaos. Okay. At the same time, you got all these people out here trying to to write the rules. The, the media is going into overdrive. They done lost their minds. Okay. He's the author. You gonna tell me how it's gonna be? I'm listening to my father. I shall not die, but live. Decree and declare it. I shall not die, but live. You can pump fear into unbelievers. All the day long. But Yasharel, we operate under faith. The just shall live by faith, not by sight. Faith. Brothers and sisters, I just want you to be encouraged. As you see these things, and if a person is going to admit wrong, they need to admit the complete wrong they have done. Like these propaganda machine newspapers, okay? When you report evil against the person, when you report evil, that's like a young man lying and calling a virgin a whore. And then they start to mistreat that young lady. Or calling an honest man a criminal. And he gets shot down dead in the street. Because everybody thinks he's a suspect. That's him. That's him. That's the description. That's him. That's him. No, 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 no. God is restoring the years. Understand, you may have people who are confessing to the evil they have done, but from whence does it come? It's coming from the most high. You shall not die, but live. You shall not die, but live. And... This is what the Most High says. I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. So there was a time, this was intended, but that time is up. Now you got these other people, they just one issue after another trying to distract, but we know that game. It's a tired game. The game been there since we've been here. We've been in the belly of the beast, so we know the belly of the beast, but here's the thing. We also know the voice of the one to whom we belong. We know our master's voice. Okay. Now, I'm going to finish where I started. I'm going back. Psalm 118, verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Let me tell you right now. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine own understanding, but in all, not some, not sort of, not this part, not that part, in all thy ways acknowledge him. He 
shut direct thy path. Trust in the Lord. I'm not putting my trust in man. Okay? And finish. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Most High Elohim. Beloved, be encouraged. Shalom.